to me, this is classic Spyroco, and I'll explain more of that as this review goes on. And this is a second look at the Spyroco military on my channel. Uh, I had an older video a long time ago, and I thought I'd redo the, the video, give it a seven-point review, and see if I can do the knife a little more justice, and also, uh, you know, as people mature, um, the opinions and, and the way things are presented, perhaps, hopefully, uh, can be done more professionally. For Spyderco and newcomers alike, this seven-point review format is a critique on performance in both utility and also tactical use. And so this is a very challenging video format uh, for a knife to do well. I hope you understand I'm not trying to persuade you from buying Spyderco products. In fact, actually, they have a, a lot of unique and interesting and very reliable, well-made knives uh, in their catalog. And I personally own a couple that I have tested that are quite impressive. So for me, the concept of this knife is that it's pretty much just a, a beautiful, uh, large folding knife. Uh, it's not specifically focus built. You know, for example, it's not, let's say, a slip joint, a friction folder with like a G10 handle scale and a highly uh, rust resistant blade. So it's great for like maybe kitchen utility use of some sort. It's not meant to be anything specific. At least I don't see that in this design. It's more of just a, a nice, uh, I would say elegant folder. Now I stated uh, in the past that the screws here uh, are, are weak and uh, that is now something more I think I would say backed or supported now um, as we see all these new um, knives out there coming out by newer recent knife makers and um, you know this trend of knives being more I say I guess uh, extreme built and even Spyderco themselves, it's in their own catalog and, and they've embraced that. So it's not something I think, uh, if I say now that these screws are, are kind of fragile, that that is anything that will go question, I guess. Um, and plus these are the, the flat type. So they're not domed like the pocket clip screws. So what you have here is at least with this, when you when you put the, uh, the Torx, uh, Torx wrench in there, you know, you have at least a little bit more, I guess say meat, a little more depth. And, and in these, it's very, very shallow where the tool rests, just barely, you know, going in. And so easier to strip these kind of screws. Also, I don't get the impression that they're hardened. So they do tend to be a little more soft. And also they are tapped directly into a weak material, which is this aluminum backspacer. Uh, at least on this one, it's aluminum. And, uh, you know, that's a soft material. And then you have you know, fine threading, uh, you know, tapping it directly into it. It's just not really the, the strongest combination for sure. I think this knife could be updated in many ways. Uh, for example, you know, when you see this construction right here, there is a screw on both sides for the stop pin. And uh, to be honest, at this point, I think they could remove that and just have a, a press fit stop pin that goes, that sits in between the the two scales and that would do fine or even extend this backspace all the way to that point so that when it you know when it opens it just hits the backspacer and you could eliminate that spot uh, if you guys remember on this knife uh, when you adjust the screw it can affect the blade centering and so I think it's just it's a little bit more than necessary especially when you look at like utility use that's just more parts to maintenance that there's a nested steel a liner in the liner lock versions there's also nested steel liners but in this one you can see it's in there and then also there's a steel insert in the lock bar and that's like a new trend on the frame locks and I think with that you're looking at then another weak point you know you have this spot right here that a screw could break or rust could form I mean pretty much when you look at like the construction uh, one work day on a farm and perhaps out on the ranch or something and it's slightly wet and your knife's going to have rust in the liners uh, perhaps rust in these screws and it just will become a nightmare instantaneously and so I think a few less complexities uh, would actually benefit the knife I think that is a common sense statement um, less parts uh, equals less maintenance and better than for utility and then this lock bar cutout right here, this design that makes the that lock bar easy to access. Uh, it's it's very convenient that it's like that. 
but I would say it's not that great for uh, perhaps like stabbing techniques if you're going to be using it in EDC purposes like that. Like if you have to, to stab into many objects and stuff, then you know you can like basically watch. You can just you can disengage it by like holding it, and if something pushes down the blade, it pushes that way. It pushes it and unlocks it. So I think for if your EDC tasks don't require that kind of uh, stabbing motion, then you're good to go. You know this grind actually is quite simple. It's a, a simplistic grind. It basically is just press it up and against the grinder and just <laughs> let it let it do its magic and and then you end up with a full flat grind and it, it's not much work to do but in this case i think spyroco has has created a, a look with the full flat grind it's like it's cost effective but it looks great uh, especially here i think it's it's maybe perhaps the profile of the blade that that really i would say like with spyroco knives full flat grind looks great and you can see it's, there's no swedges. It's a very simplistic design, but it, it looks good. And full flat grind is a, a very good type of uh, blade geometry. For performance, I feel this knife is, is very second nature. The spiral drop is cool, but you can see where your hand is afterwards. I mean, if you can, if you can remember to do that, it's a little bit uh, awkward. Uh, the position makes you more prone to do that. I would say when it comes to like cutting with the tip and trying to perhaps do fine cutting or, or tracing images and cutting out like I don't know stencils and those kind of things, uh, it's not that easy. I can say just just trying to choke up or pinch pinch right here. It's it's not exactly like an exacto knife or a, or even a small knife like a mini tough light. It's just the the design of it, uh, especially with the, the curve, just makes it a little more challenging to get precise. I really know where you're cutting. I would say it's not so good in the kitchen. Uh, it's best suited for like a mid-sized task then. Uh, with this sort of negative angle, you know, definitely in a sense, with that, there's no curvature here of, uh, that's sharpened, but basically it's sort of like a recurve. So it's very good for those kind of uh, pulling style cuts, but if you're working some very wet, then, you know, between the, the stainless steel inside to the, uh, the, to the a lot of hardware everywhere. It's it's not exactly good in the kitchen, and I know this because I uh, I have another one that the fluted military, and that one has rust. It's just uh, in my opinion, it, it's better for somebody who does cutting tasks that don't require much rust resistance. I say the weight is good. Um, it's it's more practical than some of these more newer knives that have come out, where I think sometimes they're just the overbuilt aspect is is just kind of gone too crazy and. Uh, for a folding knife, this is much more convenient. I mean, I think like one of the more popular sellers, I think for Spyroco is perhaps a Manix too lightweight. Uh, you know, this knife is still very lightweight. The clip is really strong, uh, very durable. Uh, if this was the the liner lock version with the dual G10, it'll definitely stay in your pocket because you got this light knife. Um, the profile actually, this part here, when it rests against your legs and it's tipped down, uh, it keeps the knife from being pushed out. I mean, it just tends to, the overall shape of the knife is very convenient in pocket. And like I said, with it not weighing much, there's not much, uh, I say, chance of it being, I guess you would say, falling out or being pushed out. Uh, this pocket clip is very, very strong and the retention is good. So that all combined makes this uh, very good for that. And the big hole cutout is, is easy to, to operate. Um, they always say, like, with or without gloves. Yeah, definitely uh, using this opening method is, is very problem free. But I do think, you know, with Spyroco, we've seen them do a lot now with uh, some of the other locking methods, like the compression lock. This design is kind of, kind of welcomes a compression lock because uh, this area right here, especially on this, this G10 side, you know, it gets narrow here. So uh, a locking side, uh, a liner lock or frame lock wouldn't be good on this side. But in designs like the Spyroco Jr. where, you know, it has this, this big relief cutout or choil, then it's okay to have the locking bar up here and it kind of allows more leeway in the design, more more creativity. So in that sense, if this was a, a compression lock, which is, is very strong, um, you know, if you guys see that, that Tepera Military 2 testing, uh, I remember how strong it is and uh, so far all the compression locks are just very durable and so it would be just a stronger lock, uh, less chance of disengagement and I think just something a little bit more uh, Perhaps even more Spyderco, you know, since that that is definitely a, a Spyderco idea. So the design, I think this blade is awesome. 
in the sense that it's great for penetration. Uh, definitely this is kind of a no-nonsense. It'll slide in in between any kind of uh, uh, weaving, webbing, um, clothing. Uh, it definitely can pierce very well. Obviously with knives that have like a, a finer tip, you know, you, you have the risk of it getting damaged. But, I mean, knives are not invincible tools. They, they all have like a certain level of wear. Uh, you know, you use them. I mean, even if, if we're talking, even, you know, back in the day, let's, let's not forget the logic that, like, for example, if you were to use a sword and, and fight with it, uh, there's a point where it'll break or the edge will continue getting chipped and degraded as it hits other objects. And, and the same way with this knife, uh, in terms of a tactical application, uh, you can't expect it to, to last forever, but I would say regardless, you're going to get a lot of use out of this blade because there is a curve, there's a lot of length. There's this area that kind of gets avoided when you cut, so it'll remain sharp because most of the time you focus here. And uh, regardless of the tip breaks, you still have a nice uh, kind of aggressive, uh, can I say, acute angle here as it sort of goes uh, to this really fine point. I say newer knives have more focused ergonomics for being uh, tactical. And with the military, I would say it's decent ergonomics. Um, it's kind of like almost like a, a dodo where you know it, it would be perfect if this was was cut out that way too so that there was two more little kind of like I guess say points to, to catch your fingers but as is you know it has this comfortable grip uh, at least it has a sort of end here and, and a front here is to to hold and um, I mean definitely it's not tactical if we look at that word I mean it doesn't have jimping here or, or over here but I think that's where I perhaps uh, had such an issue in the past with this knife was that the key reason why I, I do these reviews and I started reviewing knives was that to to newcomers, to people who, who don't know much about knives, when we first look at this and they call this the Spyrica military, you know, you, you think that title means it's it's for military use. And I think a lot of knives, that's the issue, the marketing and the, the name of the knife, uh, the presentation can be deceptive. And I think in 2013, it's more obvious, like I said, now with all these overbuilt knives, uh, that this is, is not perhaps like a tactical military hard use knife. And I refuse to lie and say this knife is made for something extreme. Uh, that would still be that would be going against, uh, like I said, this this new trend that's being embraced by even Spyrco uh, in some of their newer like frame lock knives uh, with with finger guards and flippers. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, that this is with this blade grind and uh, this lock bar cutout and the lack of jimping that this is not per se you know even the hardware it's not per se a, a hard use tactical knife meaning it, it wouldn't be I would say it wouldn't last the longest in an extreme situation the deployment of the knife uh, it's not super smooth the knife has a sort of like uh, consistent I would say I mean it it, it drops but it's just not like nowhere near as smooth as when there is a, a bushing like on a paramilitary 2 or even like a uh, it's not even as smooth as something like the uh, util attack uh, it's just I think just the amount of time they spent perhaps they could have uh, spent more time smoothing out all the components uh, so I don't really think that's really that bad uh, it's smooth enough to still be able to, to flick open in a variety of ways and the tip down carry is fine uh, especially since you know it is a longer knife, I think the logic here was they were thinking that you know you, when you pull it out, your hand is close to the finger hole, so it's easier to operate. I, I have tactical knives where uh, they're the, the same size and and the pot clips down here, so when you, when you pull it out, uh, you're far away from that. You usually have to use the finger, or it depends on your hand size. Uh, but in this case, uh, the military I think is it is practical in that sense, and it's not. A deep carry so it's much better for uh, tactical purposes you have something at least to try to reach and grab for so definitely uh, that's fine uh, overall that design is is good and I do love this this pot clip actually I find it very cool I think it looks more unique or industrial for performance well the safety trail and tactical situation uh, it, it's there but I would say in, in an emergency situation, if you were to deploy it and not pay attention and your, your hand was anywhere but up to this point, then that safety choil is, is irrelevant. So I would say it, there is a, a functional choil, but perhaps more for utility. Uh, in a task situation, that's perhaps not as uh, lenient as we, we would want. 
and the lock can disengage it. Like I said, uh, you stab, and if, if something pushes that towards us right now on the camera and down, uh, it just, your finger, you're holding down there and it's, it's pushing up against your finger. It's a, it's a negative angle blade, so it naturally by pushing, there's pressure on the top of the blade. So as a push and thing, you go in and you stab, uh, and it, something continues to give constant pressure here. Uh, if that thing gives pressure and you're perhaps moving or fighting and you're, you're wiggling and then all of a sudden you, your finger pulls on that. Overall the design though, the size of it makes it a good, uh, I'd say tackle knife, especially if, if you're prominently slashing um, with the negative angle. Uh, it is a good slashing knife and so my final thoughts, uh, you can see this is an older knife. Uh, this was limited production run and I still have it. And you can see, like, obviously I've taken care of it. I haven't used it. This is more of a collector's piece. And, and I think, you know, whether or not I ever intend to sell it, the thing is here that this is a, a classy, uh, to me, classic Spyroco. It's a more classic knife, traditional knife. And um, definitely for its time, it was very ingenuitive. And um, overall, the design of it, uh, even even the part, pocket clip, you know, uh, have been become synonymous with the Spyroco name, uh, the flat grind, the, the blade, just the sort of leaf shape they call, I guess, blade. Um, to me, this is more of like a, a perhaps a, a kitchen style blade, but but if we look at the knife overall, like I said, the blade shape and the 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 applications and how you can use it, I think this is more of a knife that I would personally call like the native or something, because. If you look at older agricultural knives, usually they do have rounder handles and they tend to have the sort of larger here, get more narrow, which is kind of like, almost like, I guess you would say perhaps a bushcraft, wherever, like um, uh, more knives, paring knives, a lot of older knives, they, they tend to be just traditional in shape. There, there wasn't much focus on this area, uh, more on back here because you're pulling and cutting and also because um, there was emphasis on comfort. And so this this overall shape, you can see that it has that, uh, especially here on the loss, you can see it's sort of a, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller towards the front. And so for me, that kind of has an agricultural or a traditional look, almost like a, a parang even, you know, where, where when you when you fling the blade and chop, uh, it's this portion that you're trying to catch. So it's, it's this portion is the focus when you're doing cuts uh, for grip. While on, while on a tactical knife, it's more emphasis up here because you don't want to slide up on the blade. So whether I dislike or like this knife, um, pros and cons, uh, I'm going to say that this is not really a tactical knife. Uh, so for the name military, it's, it's not exactly uh, for that style of use. It's a great knife, uh, very fun to carry, uh, very elegant, uh, but particularly more for dry tasks and also uh, not any sort of stabbing motions. And also, you, you have to like cleaning a lot because you're probably gonna have to maintenance it. Uh, especially if someone who you, you know you're more out and about, you have an active lifestyle. Uh, this thing uh, will require a lot of uh, protection, a lot of coating and uh, maintenance. So thank you for watching. I hope this redo of my review of the Spyroco Military uh, was a little bit more uh, better, a little bit more focused. And as always, I recommend you guys do your research, um, make sure when you buy something you know what you're getting and you know the proper ways to, to use it and its limitations. And uh, as always, you can email me, uh, neptuneknives at gmail.com, be happy to answer any questions regarding my experience with this. Uh, you can also leave comments here on this uh, in the comments box. And uh, keep looking forward to more videos, uh, more 7 point reviews and tactical knife talk and whatever I can do to contribute. Thank you.